a wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a discovery of a very strange pulsating object that currently does not make sense and according to the researchers should not actually be possible or exist at all. And that's because based on the observations and the recent discovery, this new object known as ASCAP J1839-0756 seems to be producing a lot of pulsating emissions we've never seen before and that cannot be explained using modern physics. And so let's discuss this unusual object in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with the discovery first. And while the first hint for the existence of this object was from the Australian radio telescope known as ASCAP, also known as Australian Square Kilometer Array Pathfinder. This telescope is actually known for producing the biggest radio map of the night skies we've ever had, and we've discussed this in one of the previous videos in the description. And so during its normal operations and normal observations, there was one unusual signal that kind of stood out because there was really nothing around it. Here this appeared to be as an extremely strong radio signal that was at first getting brighter, but then started to dim with its brightness going down by about 95% in just 15 minutes. And this was already kind of unusual and actually has not been seen before. For example, instead of a typical fast radio burst, this was actually an extremely slow radio burst. And so it wasn't clear exactly what happened here or what produced this emission. Overall, the emission looked something like this, which meant that additional observations would have to be required in order to find out what's up here. And that's exactly what the scientists recently did in the process of uncovering a lot more emissions, especially when combining this with several other telescopes, including the famous Meerkat from South Africa. And this time, instead of a single emission, they actually discovered that this is a periodic emission that happens extremely slowly, with the new data suggesting that it takes approximately six and a half hours between pulses. Or basically that this is indeed a pulsating radio object, but with an extremely long period we've never seen before. And this is basically where it kind of makes no sense, and I guess let me explain why. Normally when it comes to pulsating radio sources, we usually detect them from various neutron stars, the most common one being a pulsar. And so typically what we actually see from pulsars is basically one of their beams pointed almost directly at us, with the periods corresponding to the wobble of the pulsar as it spins around its axes. And obviously in the last few decades, thousands and thousands of pulsars have been discovered pretty much everywhere, some of them spinning ridiculously fast, up to approximately 700 times per second, and you might actually want to check out one of the recent videos where another such pulsar potentially established a kind of a spinning limit when it comes to the maximum velocity, that video should be in the description below, and some pulsars spinning much much slower. But to date, the record for the slowest spinning pulsar seems to be 23 and a half seconds per rotation. This pulsar was discovered by the Chinese radio astronomers approximately seven years ago. But in the last few years, researchers also started to discover unusual long period radio pulsators, or radio transients as they're also known, which turned out to be some kind of a new class of objects where they basically still get to emit radio waves, but they're just doing so much much slower. Here the period usually ranged between 18 minutes to maybe 54 minutes. So hundreds to thousands of times slower than a typical pulsar. And that actually did not make much sense, mostly because of how we think it works for a typical neutron star. In order for a pulsar to produce these radio pulsations, it has to actually spin pretty fast. And so in a typical pulsar, it's really the rotation of the magnetic field that has to happen really fast that produces these radio emissions. And that's because this magnetic field basically acts as a kind of a particle accelerator that accelerates various electrons that were produced as a result of gamma ray radiation coming from the neutron star interacting with the magnetic field around the pulsar. And so essentially through this rotational interaction of the magnetic field, a lot of these electrons are accelerated to very high velocities, which produces radio emissions in two separate directions following the magnetic field. But the object has to be spinning really fast for all of this to work. And so according to modern theories, it has to spin at least once per minute. Otherwise, it's actually going to stop producing radio waves because the magnetic field is just not going to be able to create any of this anymore. And so the previous detection of these long pulsators already produced a bit of a mystery. But here there might be one explanation. Maybe these are actually not pulsars, but possibly magnetars, which could be producing these emissions in some other way through a different mechanism involving a much more powerful magnetic field. Or alternatively, these could be highly magnetized white dwarfs, which would be spinning much much slower and may have similar magnetic properties, allowing them to pulsate in a similar way. But so far, individual white dwarfs have never actually been found to have these unusual pulsations, 
or at least that was the explanation for previous detections of these long period oscillators detected in the last few years. And here we're talking about pulsations in minutes. But now we have a different story. Here, whatever is pulsating is doing so every six and a half hours. And that's completely unexplainable. This would be the slowest pulsar ever discovered and a pulsar where the mechanism cannot be explained using any technique. For example, can this be a magnetar? Well, pulsating magnetars have been discovered before and actually with even slow pulsations, but all those pulsations were in the X-rays, not in radio light. Here's actually one of these examples, the magnetar 1E161348-5055. That's technically a supernova remnant that produces periodic X-ray emissions every 6.6 .6 hours. But here we see no X-rays, only radio light, which would make the magnetar explanation very challenging. Now, could this be some kind of a magnetized white dwarf? Well, usually white dwarfs produce other emissions as well, and in this case, no signs of white dwarfs have been seen so far, and no additional emissions or additional observations seem to be visible. Basically, no evidence for this being some kind of a white dwarf either. And so if not a magnetar, and if not a white dwarf, and if it cannot be a typical pulsar, what is this? What can possibly produce super strong radio emissions every six and a half hours, yet produce no other emissions visible so far? And the answer is, I don't know, actually nobody does. This is basically a new, completely unexplainable, mysterious object. But what makes this object even more mysterious is the fact that even trying to model this or explain this physically just doesn't make sense. But we do have some hints based on what we know about pulsars and neutron stars. In other words, there's maybe a hint that this is a neutron star. And this is actually based on the orientation of the magnetic field compared to the rotational axis. So normally, in a typical pulsar, the rotational axis is just a little bit misaligned with the magnetic axis. Which is actually one of the reasons pulsars can pulsate beaming their light toward us. But in this case, for this pulsar, its magnetic axis seems to be almost at 90 degrees from the rotational axis, because during one of the observations, it was actually determined that it seems to produce a second flash after about 3.2 hours. This is known as the interpulse, and it's basically coming from the opposite direction, but it's not directly pointed at us, so it's much more difficult to see. And this apparently happens to approximately 3% of all pulsars we've seen so far, implying that this is maybe some kind of a really bizarre neutron star we've never seen before. But the problem is, of course, the fact that this spins so slow. All of the previous detections were spinning at least several times per second, and in every single case, over time as the pulsar slows down, we expect these radio emissions to stop completely. Nevertheless, there is still at least one hint right now that this is maybe a magnetically driven process from some kind of a very bizarre neutron star. Or, I guess, aliens. Well, maybe not aliens because the emissions here don't really seem to produce anything resembling artificial communication. Either way though, there is definitely a huge mystery now. The mystery of what exactly this is, how it works, or even how far away this object is from us. At this point, all of this is still unknown. Now, chances are if we actually discover similar objects somewhere out there, it will become much easier to explain them. But for now, many of these long period pulsators discovered in the last three years don't really make a lot of sense. And though it was already difficult to explain pulsators with 50 minute periods, here we have to now explain one with six and a half hour period. Which means that for the next few years, this is most likely going to be rewriting a lot of physics books and may even end up producing some kind of a new model about neutron stars or even discover some kind of a new object we never knew existed before. Maybe this is actually some kind of a bizarre quark star or something else really exotic that we could not imagine before but that was always right here, sending signals to us, just extremely slowly, so this is the first time we've detected it. And so at least for now, ASCAP J1839-0756 is going to become a new radio mystery, joining the ranks of FRBs and a few other emissions we've discussed in some of the previous videos that still cannot be explained. Once there are some updates, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a general membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.